Hello, everybody. Now let's take a look at problem 3.65. This problem is one of the problems uh, related to your homework five. In this problem, uh, we are going to find the Thevenin equivalent of the circuit below. And this problem is going to cover uh, two things that you should know. The first is how to find a Thevenin equivalent. And then the second is how to use superposition as a method of simplifying circuit analysis so that you can find a Thevenin equivalent or solve a circuit any way you wish. So let's get started. First, we know that we need to find a Thevenin equivalent. And that Thevenin equivalent is going to look like this circuit. It's going to have a voltage source, and it's going to have a Thevenin resistance. So <clears throat> we don't have any dependent sources, which is good, because that's going to simplify some things for us as we look at how to solve this problem. Because remember, we have this table that shows us Thevenin-Norton analysis techniques. And we can see uh, on this table that some of these techniques uh, work when you have dependent sources and some work um, when you have independent sources, but not all of them. In particular, let's take a note that this equivalent resistance uh, cannot contain dependent sources. It can only contain independent sources. So great. We look at our, our circuit and we do not have any dependent sources, only independent sources. So let's Let's find the Thevenin resistance first using the equivalent resistance method. And we're going to use this method because this is typically the easiest method. Let's go ahead and find the Thevenin resistance first. Um, as far as the finding the Thevenin voltage, we can use either method and we'll get to that later. So let's start by finding the Thevenin resistance. So first, to find the Thevenin resistance using the equivalent resistance method, we're going to turn the sources off. We're, because we're using the equivalent resistance method, these must be independent sources. To turn the sources off, a voltage is going to uh, turn into uh, uh, a voltage source that turns off is going to be zero volts. If something has zero volts across it, this is just a wire. Something with zero volts across it is just a wire, which is a short circuit. Okay. If we turn a current source off, this is going to have zero amps. What is something that has zero amps across it? An open circuit. Okay. So <clears throat> we are going to turn the sources off and get short circuits for the voltage sources, open circuits for the current sources. When we do it, it looks like this. Now we have a more simplified circuit we can use to find the Thevenin resistance. Taking a look at this circuit, we can simplify this a little bit more, just remove part of the drawing, and it will look like this. All right, now that we have our circuit, let's continue working to find the Thevenin resistance. Let's color code the nodes so we can see that some of these, the 4, 6, and 3 ohm resistors, are all in parallel. Let's find the equivalent resistance for those three. That will simplify our analysis. OK, finding the equivalent resistance, we use this method, which gives us an equivalent resistance of 1.333 ohms. Hopefully, you're seeing by now that despite the fact that we're working on finding a Thevenin equivalent, Right, these methods that we're using go all the way back to our chapter 2-3 section on equivalent circuits. So the things that you learned previously will continue to build in this circuit analysis. So we've found an equivalent resistance of 1.33 ohms on our way to find the Thevenin resistance. We can simplify the circuit even more. And now, look, we just have two resistors, and they're in series. We have a 4 thirds resistor and a 2.5 ohm resistor. They're in series, so they're going to add up together. When we look in for this Thevenin resistance, it's going to be two resistors in series, which gives us a 3.88 ohm Thevenin resistance. Great. We're halfway done now. So now let's take a look at the Thevenin uh, voltage. We have two methods here, and we can use either method. But let's try the short circuit method, since the uh, circuit, as given in the problem statement, is already an open circuit, right? And that's what this means, where it says VOC. We have an open circuit already. So <clears throat> let's use this open circuit method right here. 
And we can see that if we do this, the open circuit voltage is going to be equal to the Thevenin voltage. So first, to do the open circuit method, we need to replace the load resistor with an open circuit. And that's already done, right? So we could have a load resistor here, right? But that's already removed. It's gone. And this is already an open circuit. So now we just need to find the open circuit voltage. So how can we find it? Let's try using the superposition method so that you can see the superposition method in action. The superposition method, <clears throat> we should note, uh, can be done like this. We'll first turn off the current source, and we'll find the first open circuit voltage, and then we'll turn off the voltage source and find the second open circuit voltage. We'll add them together to get uh, using superposition to find the total open circuit voltage. So we're taking two linear circuits, combining their effects to get that overall volt, open circuit voltage. So we'll turn off the current source first, looking like this. This uh, circuit, we can see that the four and six ohm are in parallel. We will simplify it down so that the four and six ohm are in parallel to a 2.4 ohm resistor. Now we have a circuit on the left that uh, we can use as a voltage divider, but we don't always look at the voltage divider this way. Uh, so just for simplicity, I'm going to just redraw the circuit like this, which is often how we do voltage dividers with the voltage source on the left, the voltage, the, the resistors on the right. If you can do this in your head, great. If not, uh, please follow along this way and perhaps this will help you see how it works. Now, um, although we have, we've rearranged this uh, circuit so that it looks like we normally do, we can see that because of the, the rearranging, right, this plus minus is kind of flipping, right? And so it is plus to minus this way. The current as we define it would be going in this direction, but <clears throat> the, uh, be because of the, um, the way that the open circuit voltage has already been defined with the plus to minus terminals, right? We're actually going to have the current going in the opposite direction as the open circuit, right? And so um, to, to make this clear up on the previously drawn circuit, uh, let me show you the, the circuit, right? The current should be going like this, I, which is going from minus to plus. So we're going to have this backwards from what we normally do. So because we defined open circuit voltage one backwards, we're going to end up with this negative sign, which gives us a minus 1.1 volt V open circuit one. Now let's turn off the voltage source to get V open circuit two. Turning off the voltage source turns this into a short circuit. This is a short circuit now. There's no current in this resistor, right? This resistor has no current in it, right? Because why, why would any current travel through here, right? It's just a open resistor. There's nothing grounding it. It's not connected to anything. So no current will actually flow. There's no potential between this node. There's no potential between this node and this node. So there's no current across this. Because there's no current, I've removed the resistor. Now we can see we have three resistors. Color coding the nodes shows us that all three of those resistors are in parallel. We can simplify that into an equivalent resistance of four thirds ohms. We're going to replace that in the circuit to a four third ohm equivalent resistance. We can now calculate V open circuit two across that uh, those terminals from A to B. This is quite easy, right? We will multiply the uh, four amps, which is that independent current source by that four thirds ohm resistor to give us a V open circuit two of 5.33 volts. Perfect. Now we know that the total uh, open circuit voltage will be the superposition of open circuit one plus open circuit two. The effects of the current source and the effects of the voltage source will be combined. Combining those gives us a total V open circuit of 4.22 volts. So now we know that the uh, total Thevenin voltage is just V open circuit. Great. We found V open circuit already, which is the Thevenin voltage. So now with the Thevenin voltage of 4.22,
and the Thevenin resistance of 3.83, we can draw a final Thevenin equivalent circuit that looks like this, that simplifies this problem on the left. Hopefully this helped you understand both Thevenin equivalent circuits and superposition method of analysis. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.